Hey, what up, everybody? Jimmy Smith. This time, bring you a different kind of fight. For people who don't know, I now work for ProBox TV. Been working for them for a couple weeks, doing both their desk show. I've been hosting that. And then Calling Live Fights did my first one uh, last week up in Tampa. So check it out, ProBox TV. The biggest fight this weekend is not MMA. It is Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney. I don't just want to talk about the X's and O's of that fight. I want to talk about the lead up and a lot of the mental health issues you see in fighting. And there's a misnomer about it that I think people don't understand. And you have to be around the sport long enough to understand it. First, X's and O's, Devin Haney, of course, undefeated. Um, a, a great fighter <clears throat> who stays behind the jab, who doesn't do anything crazy, technically extremely sound, and it's hard to get around his fundamentals. They're incredibly good. High hands, good footwork, good defense, good movement, everything. The guy's just super-duper solid, has real speed, doesn't have a ton of power. This is a guy who hasn't gotten a knockout win since 2019, um, and as the talent has gone up, he's gotten more and more cautious in a sense where he'll win and he'll win comfortably most of the time, but he doesn't um, go out there and, and risk a lot for the knockout. The first George Cambosis Jr. fight is the example I always talk about when I, when I talk about Devin Haney, where he's up on every judge's scorecard, but he was throwing mostly jabs, mostly kind of pitter-pat stuff where he's outpointing Cambosis Jr. They fought in Australia. Right, They fought in, in George Cambosis Jr.'s turf, and I remember watching that fight and going, I think Devin Haney is well ahead. But if I were his coach, I'd start going, hey, start throwing some right hands, see if we can hurt this guy. Remember, we're in somebody else's backyard. They're going to rob us if they can. Let's add some damage to this. You are outboxing him. You're, 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 you're pitching a shutout here. But let's go see if we can hit a home run. If not, knock him out, hurt him, put him on his butt sealed the deal with some power, and he never did. Now, as far as I know, his coach never gave that advice, but the idea that in a situation you're like, okay, you're way ahead, let's even, you know, get this guy out of here, put him down, he never does that. He never does that. You know, it's, if, he's, if he's ahead, he stays ahead. There are two kinds of fighters, ones that get ahead and stay ahead, and ones that get ahead and go, okay, let's see if I can get this guy out of here. I remember one time when Floyd Mayweather, when Floyd Mayweather was fighting Carlos Baldemir, Emmanuel Stewart talked about how Floyd Mayweather had compared himself to the GOAT of all time, in my opinion, Sugar Ray Robinson. And Emmanuel Stewart said, Sugar Ray Robinson would never be this far ahead of somebody and not knock him out. That's the difference, is when Sugar Ray Robinson was ahead of you, he finished you. And Floyd feels no desire or need to do that. Stay safe and win. Devin Haney very much in that Floyd Mayweather camp, right? That model, which is if you're ahead, stay ahead, don't do anything stupid. So fundamentally extremely sound, but doesn't do anything to get the fight finished if he doesn't absolutely have to. Will Ryan Garcia make him do that? Now what Ryan Garcia has, he has length, he has speed, he has a very good left hook. Um, the, the, the difficulty, people talk about the hand speed of Ryan Garcia. Y yes, it's very, very good. Uh, you could say exceptional. But boxers see real hand speed a lot more than mixed martial artists do, right? Well, it's, it's just, you know, boxing hand speed is like just a different level of speed. And you can't really come up in boxing and get to where Demi, Devin Haney has gotten and not face a lot of guys with real natural speed, either in the pros or in your camps and sparring, anything like that. So the kind of speed that makes us go, holy crap, yes, it's, it's comparatively rare, but there's a lot more of it in boxing. So the idea that he's just going to outspeed Devin Haney, well, Devin Haney isn't slow, first off. And I remember when Ryan Garcia fought Gervonta Davis, and, man, Ryan Garcia is so fast. And I go, dude, Tank Davis is not slow. <laughs> he's fast and powerful and unorthodox and likes knocking guys out. He's just, you know, it's just he had a, a different skill set. But the same idea that that speed for a high-level boxer is going to make him go, oh, my God, I've never seen this before. Look, they, they, they see a lot of speed. So... The speed, I don't see that being the deciding factor. And Gervonta Davis, I was talking with Chris Algieri, who's, who's my co-host on ProBox TV, and he said, no, it was Pauli Malignaggi, my other co-host. Pauli Malignaggi said, look, you know, Gervonta Davis told Ryan Garcia, all you have is a left hook. All he threw was a left hook. Gervonta Davis dealt with it very, very well and knocked him out. He said, when he was told to his face, all you're going to do is throw a left hook, that, that's all he had. 
So in the one time he, you know, should have changed things up or done something different, he, he clearly didn't have that in him. So still fast, still had a good left hook, but it's it those two uh, attributes, those two advantages are, are pretty easy for boxers at the elite level to adjust to. The only one who looked good against Devin Haney, I thought Vasily Lomachenko beat Devin Haney. If not, I thought it was super-duper close. I, I couldn't believe it was a unanimous decision. But if you look at that fight, it took Loma a minute to figure Devin Haney out. It took him a few rounds. And Lomachenko is the kind of guy that can figure out really, really quickly and make you pay with his footwork and his, his otherworldly combinations, all this stuff. And he did start doing that, but it took him quite a few rounds to figure out Devin Haney because Devin Haney is so technically solid. If Lomachenko had started the the process of breaking down Devin Haney maybe a couple hours, uh, a couple rounds earlier, we might have had a different fight. But even Lomachenko, who's a master of kind of read and react, it took a while. And 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 that's the thing about fundamentals. When someone's fundamentally sound in combat sports, it's it's hard to find your offensive opportunities. Hands up, chin down, good positioning, right? In jiu-jitsu, it's a really strong guard, great positioning, whatever. You're putting your weight in the right place. It's, it's just hard to be offensive against people like that. And Devin Haney has a great jab and great fundamentals, and it's hard to get him to open up, especially he doesn't take a lot of risks because he's not looking for the knockout. So he doesn't swing wide. Now, will he in this fight with all the lead up and the pushing and shoving and that? Maybe. I think the only way he does it is late in a fight that he is controlling. So if he it's a wipeout for the first seven rounds, you might hear what I didn't hear and I thought I might hear with the George Campbell's junior fight, which is, okay, you're ahead. Let's see if we can get this guy out of here. You know, take some risks, throw some right hands, throw some left hooks, get some power punches in there, and see if we can finish this guy. You know, and 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 the emotional side of it is, hey, don't start too fast because this guy pissed you off at the weigh-in, but if you get ahead, you might take that risk to get the fight over with when you normally would. So my pick is Devin Haney. You can get plus money. We did a gambling segment on today's Pro Box show, and you can get plus money for, I think it's under 10 rounds a knockout because Devin Haney typically doesn't finish guys. For plus money, Devin Haney by knockout in the first 10 rounds. Ta-da! So Devin Haney's going to win, uh, almost certainly, but you're not going to make any money. He's like a minus 900 favorite. But if you know, the Vegas thinks he's not going to knock him out. Well, the guy did piss him off, um, and he might build a substantial lead and then look for the knockout. I think that might be the difference. So I would go Devin Haney, and i go knockout in under 10 rounds if you can get plus money on it, depending on your book. So the other side of this discussion is, which we have talked about a lot on Pro Box TV, is the mental health aspect of Ryan Garcia. And there are two camps. Dude, this kid has problems. Yeah. He's crazy like a fox. He's building up hype for the fight. He knows what he's doing. It's a rational decision to say and tweet and talk about weird stuff all the time. From my perspective, there is a difference between fight promotion and having mental health issues. And I've never seen a fighter have mental health issues in a fighting context at the weigh-ins, pre-fight, doing insane weird stuff, blah, 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 who didn't have mental health issues in real life. I've never known anybody who was kind of crazy in the fight context and then, you know, really normal outside of it. Guys, you just you can't do that, right? And you might say, oh, certain people hype the fight, but like in a chill, sudden kind of way, you know, most charm, the biggest arms that he knows what he's doing, but he's also not saying things that make you go. He's also not saying things that make you question his mental health. You know what he's doing. He's doing well-worn, um, well-worn pro wrestling stuff. Uh, you know, uh, Kobe Covington, he doesn't do it as well as Chael, but he's trying to do the, the rare, the, the, the pro wrestling bit, right? He's trying to do what Chael Sonnen is doing. He doesn't do it as well, but he's certainly trying to do it. There are very few things Colby Covington has said that's made me go, he's mentally ill. I don't worry about his mental health. I worry a little bit about you know his, him saying stupid things, but in a different way, it's in a way where I'm not worried about his, his mental makeup. The times I've worried about somebody's mental makeup, they went really crazy. Uh, War Machine, doing life in prison, okay? That guy did things, and I was around him in Bellator, that made me go, this guy's got serious problems. He's a he's a, a lit fuse, ready to explode. And he did, and he's doing life in prison. Jason Miller, I trained with him in the early 2000s when I started my MMA career. 
he was funny and a little off, and he started getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And now he has a ton of legal problems and in and out of jail. And, you know, you, you, you can't turn it on and off at will. When I see, when you see real genuine mental illness, it's not like, well, he's like that at the weigh-in. Well, then he's, they're at least a little bit like that all the time. And there are very few instances of someone being selectively mentally ill, where they do crazy, goofy, weird, and I'm not talking fight promotion. I'm talking weird, I'm concerned about you stuff um, that, that didn't then have legal problems, right? And it's, it's almost like once you turn on that kind of behavior, it's very difficult to then settle down and not do it when you're not fighting. Right? It isn't just for show. So the idea of he's doing this for show, I've never seen anyone do it for show. All right. You know, people tend to forget about, you know, Mike Tyson and his his meltdowns, um, you know, in and out of the ring back in his prime, Lennox Lewis and, and the ear biting incident. This guy who had constant legal problems and a lot of mental health issues, you know. Um, so he Mike, you know, people say, oh, Mike knew how to promote a fight. Well, Mike also had some serious psychological issues and he's apparently dealt well with them in the last few years. But. There was a time where I was like, man, this guy's going to end up in prison or dead. And he did end up in prison for a while. I mean, when he got out, <laughs> he's going to go back again. Um, so I've never known somebody who could turn it on and off. So I don't believe Ryan Garcia, oh, he's just doing this to promote the fight. No. No, I think mean, he's got some mental health issues. He's young. He's got a lot of money. And he's in a, a space. The problem with the, with the fighting space is no one's going to encourage you to be less crazy. I tell people all the time that in the fight world, if 10 is too much, 9.5 is perfect. So when Jason Miller was doing bully beatdown and just kind of woo weird and kind of out there and off, and all the producers I'm sure were like, "Yeah, great, keep doing that," you know. And then the show's over and you have to live with yourself and the consequences of your actions and your behavior, and it doesn't work well. It doesn't work well. in the fight world. The problem with mental health in the fight world is as long as you're knocking people out and can show up on time and make weight and not flunk the piss test, nothing else is really their problem. Right. If you had a nine to five job, you had to wake up every day at, at, at 8 a.m., clean up, get ready, go to work. You're off at five. You got to deal with people all day in, in a variety of, of situations in an office setting. The fact that you're wacko will come out at some point. The fact that you are earning money for some boss, but you can't get along with coworkers and you're doing crazy, bizarre stuff, you're not going to keep your job. The thing about athletics, and especially fighting, is it, it takes all of your problems and all of your issues. And and as long as they're over here to the side and you can score touchdowns or you can, you know, do whatever it is that your sport requires of you, nothing everything else is blinders on. They, they you know, it doesn't matter. If I go in there and win, it doesn't matter. What I do, what I tweet, how I act, it doesn't make any difference. Well, that only lasts so long. Number one. The normal guardrails of our sanity is kind of socially defined, right? You only get so far off the guardrails before somebody goes, hey, you shouldn't do that, or you can't do that, or stop, or whatever. You get in legal trouble, social trouble, whatever it is. Fighters kind of have their own rule set, and so the guide rails are a little off anyway. But you get used to kind of going around them or, or, or going wherever you want and freestyling how you're going to go. Well... Then your fight career is over and you're in some form of normal human existence where your behavior is no longer acceptable. You know? And I've seen it happen dozens of times. I've seen it happen a lot in, in the combat sports world where they were holding it together as long as they were in their prime fighting. And then as soon as that's gone and it's, you know, people aren't covering up for you anymore and putting up with your, your bullshit, it's a different world. It's a different world. It really is. So I don't think Ryan Garcia is doing anything for promotional purposes. I think he's really having some mental health issues. And uh, I hope he cleans them up. But but given my experience in this business, it's hard. As long as you're making so many millions of dollars, no one's encouraged to do anything. But once again, Devin Haney, I would say, going to make money under 10 rounds by knockout over Ryan Garcia. That's my pick. And I will see you all later. Enjoy. <laughs>